Uh, okay, cool. So yeah, I'm, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to take that uh, RI file that JC worked on and that state machine and show you how to implement it uh, using one of our runtimes. So uh, what you're seeing here is a Code Sandbox, which is an online tool, basically a self-enclosed kind of environment to build uh, web applications and quick UI and things like that. Um, and because we're in the web, I'm going to use the uh, React runtime. So Rive has a bunch of runtime libraries to help you take your Rive assets that you build in the editor and out into web applications, Flutter apps, iOS, Android, a whole number of them. Uh, you can find all the runtimes on our Rive.app site. And then uh, a bunch of documentation on how to use those runtimes with Rive um, in the Help Center. So uh, like I mentioned today, we're going to use the React runtime here, uh, I've set some things up already. Uh, just to briefly go over this, um, I'm using this use Rive hook from, this is exclusively on the, uh, the Rive React uh, library. And uh, if you're familiar with React, um, this shouldn't look too, uh, too complex here. But basically, we've got this render that's showing out all this UI here, um, uh, like HTML. Uh, and so what I want to do is to be able to swap the skin of that character that JC was building out um, by clicking this button, and then have the text show the appropriate skin here, as if maybe we we're building like a choose your avatar kind of uh, little screen for an app. And so uh, like I mentioned, we're using this use Rive here to basically set up this Rive file. So um, you can imagine uh, if I were in JC's editor, I could export that uh, Rive asset and then pull it into the project. Um, those are uh, .riv files. So I'm just specifying that as the source here. I want to autoplay the state machine. And then I'm just giving it some layout parameters, which you can also read about more in the Help Center. Um, so right here, this doesn't look too much like what JC built out. It's, it's just this kind of static person. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a state machines attribute that specifies the state machine that we're going to be building. And I believe that's, oh, I already put a variable for that up here, state machine name. So uh, that was the name of the state machine that uh, JC was building. And like Robert mentioned, at kind of towards the beginning of this workshop, um, that state machines are kind of like the, the, the contract between development and design time. And so it, it's good to kind of collaborate and uh, have a good sense of you know what are the state machine names, what are the input names that I need to be controlling to, to advance the state machine at, at implementation time. Um, and so here I'm specifying that state machine name. And if I go ahead and play that, you should see that first state, that idling state that uh, kicked off the state machine. Um, cool. Uh, now that's not super exciting because I want to I, I want to click this button and have it go through all those different skins. So what I need to do that is uh, I'm going to be using actually that first state machine that JC referenced, which is um, the one that had the skin trigger input, uh, just the one input, not the number one. And then that'll help cycle through all the different inputs as I click the button. Um, so to grab a reference to that state machine input, there's a handy hook in React that uh, comes from the Rive React library called use state machine input. So I'm going to pull that in and import that helper. And I'll call it uh, skin input. And so this uh, hook takes three parameters. It takes the Rive object that uh, gets returned from the use Rive hook here. It takes the name of the state machine that it's trying to get the state machine input from. So uh, we have a reference to that um, state machine name here, which is motion. And then the last parameter it takes is uh, the name of the input that we want to pull the reference for. And so. Uh, I also have a variable for that handy here, uh, which is called skin. That was the trigger name, uh, trigger input name. Cool. Um, so now that I have this reference to the state machine input, like I mentioned, I want to be able to fire that input when I click on this button. Um, so I have that button defined here in the in the render method. Um, so I'm going to use uh, an on click callback. Uh, and let's let's actually just make an on click callback up here. So on click. And I'm going to, like I mentioned, fire that uh, trigger input. Um, you can find more 
API documentation on like the different methods and uh, parameter names that are uh, available on some of these arrive specific variables that get returned. Um, for, for trigger inputs, the way you, you fire those triggers is just using the dot fire method. So uh, I'm going to connect that on click method here to the button. And if that worked, yep, I'm able to kind of cycle through that state machine and go through all those skins that JC built out. And so this is really connecting what JC built out at design time to um, uh, implementation. And uh, specifically, this is helpful if you're trying to toggle state machines um, through something outside of the Rive canvas. So uh, you know, listeners are awesome, and it helps shift a lot of the uh, interaction definition to the design time. Um, but there are still some times when you might need to advance state machines or have a lot more complex interaction outside of the canvas, like um, dealing with page scrolling or, or things like that. Maybe Rive will incorporate that in the future and make it less so at development time. But for now, um, to, to incorporate that kind of a, a functionality through the button, I'm just um, advancing the state machine there. Um, but as you can see, uh, this skin plane is not updating. I have this uh, kind of mapping here for all the state names that JC built out to some text that we want to display on the screen. Um, and I just built that out beforehand. Um, and yeah, so I, I, I basically want to figure out when I change to a new state like skin one, I want to show the word summer um, on the screen here. Um, and with React, it makes it nice. So I have this state variable skin text. Um, that's going to basically look at the mapping and figure out what text it should display in, in this space here. Um, and so the way I can hook into that state change, like I mentioned, is providing a callback to that use arrive um, hook. And so uh, there is a handy uh, callback here. It takes one parameter, which is event, and it basically gives me a bunch of metadata about the states that we're changing to. Um, so, I am basically want to figure out, I want to try and filter out all those skin uh, state names that, that uh, got triggered here. And so I can uh, uh, get, the, get the state name um, through uh, some filtering. So I can do event.data.filter. And that this gives me an array of the state names that it's uh, transitioning to. And um, Basically, figure out does it uh, is it one of those skin states that it's uh, transitioning to, and so if uh, let's see, we have a skin name. Now I want to be able to get the the text that we want to display here. So um, this skin name should be providing like skin one or skin three or whatever. Um, so now I'm going to get the skin text uh, display by just referencing that mapping here. And then if that uh, actually returns something from this mapping dictionary we have, let's go ahead and set that skin text using that React variable I have here with the new updated skin mapping uh, thing that I want to display. So I'm going to use skin text display. Cool. All right. So now, uh, starting off, if I swap the skin, it should correlate to uh, showing the correct skin name here with the state machine. So we got Summer, we've got Elvis, Superhero, Astronaut, whatever. And you can just continue cycling through that. Um, and so, yeah, that's uh, 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 we kind of just briefly skip, uh, went over the surface of using callbacks in Rive, um, interactivity, hooking up the state machine, grabbing references to state machine um, inputs and things like that um, to build a simple app. So yeah, that, that's all I got there. So one question for you, Zach. Um, yeah. So from a designer's perspective, um, what are the things that I need to be thinking about when I send you a file? Like we talked about inputs and wanting those named correctly. Um, what else do I want to have named for you? <laughs> 